All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 16th of March. Let's get to the top news first, and this one is a big one. The Federal Reserve yesterday cut its benchmark rate by a full percentage point to near zero and said it would boost its bond holdings by $700 billion to cushion the US economy from the coronavirus outbreak. It also announced several other actions, including letting banks borrow Uh, from the discount window for as long as 90 days and reducing reserve requirement ratios to 0%. The Fed, along with five other central banks in Canada, England, Japan, Europe and Switzerland, also announced a coordinated action to enhance the provision of liquidity globally. They agreed to lower the pricing on the standing US dollar liquidity swap arrangements by 25 basis points. Remember, the Fed's action comes less than two weeks after it slashed rates by a half percentage point in an emergency move that failed to reassure nervous investors. And the latest move is unlikely to calm nerves either. The dollar weakened and Treasuries surged after the Fed's shock move. Futures indicate that US equities are in for another bout of selling. Last I checked, all three averages were heading lower by over 4.5%. In Asia, the early rises have started muted, but the selling isn't broad-based. The Nikkei 225 in Japan was lower by only about 0.4% last I checked, and the Kospi in South Korea was positive by 0.2%. The Australian benchmark, though, was down about 5.4%. Meanwhile, the coronavirus continued to cause governments the world over to take emergency measures, primarily uh, the closing of borders to shield their citizens. The virus has now infected over 150,000 people worldwide and has killed as many as 5,700. US President Donald Trump tested negative for the virus. There were fears that he was exposed after he was photographed standing next to a close aide of Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro. The aide later tested positive for the virus. In India, the cases of novel coronavirus have risen to 107, with two deaths having been confirmed. In important corporate news over the weekend, Yes Bank came out with its results. It reported its largest ever quarterly loss in the third quarter as bad loans soared. The loss stood at a massive 18,564 crore rupees compared with a profit of around 1,000 crore rupees in the same quarter a year ago. And that loss would have been wider if not for a tax write back. The main cause for the loss was the, the fact that gross bad loans rose to over 40,000 crore rupees or nearly 19% of the bank's assets. Provisions to cover these bad loans stood at nearly 25,000 crore rupees, which led to a massive depletion of the bank's capital. In fact, core equity tier 1 ratio fell to 0.6% at the end of the quarter, compared to 8.7% in the September quarter. The minimum requirement, according to the regulations, stands at about 7.4%. The restructuring scheme to bail out Yes Bank was also announced on the weekend and one of the provisions would lock in 75% of shareholding, including both existing shareholders and those that will enter through the scheme for three years. What that means is that starting today when the trade in the stock resumes, any shareholder holding 100 shares or more will only be able to sell up to 25% of their shareholding. Look up the story on the website BloombergQuint.com for more details. Also over the weekend, the government hiked taxes on petrol and diesel. The increase in the special additional excise duty and road and infrastructure cess by a total of 3 rupees per litre will mean that there's not much of a difference in the rate that you pay at the pump, despite the sharp fall in oil prices last week. Brent crude, last I checked, was trading only slightly above the $31 per barrel mark. Now, mobile phones will attract higher tax after the Goods and Services Tax Council corrected the inverted duty structure that the industry faces. 
The council hiked the GST on mobiles and specified parts to 18% from 12%. The council also extended the due date for filing of GST returns to the 30th of June from the end of March for small businesses with an annual turnover of 5 crore. And with that, it's over to Agam Vakil for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning Agam, how are we looking at the start of the week? Good morning Alex and good morning listeners. Well, we may have closed with gains of nearly 4% last Friday but it doesn't mean that we are going to be spared of well any volatility this morning considering the SGX Nifty is indicating a decline of another 400 points. That means a decline of nearly 4%. Now in terms of stocks, I'm going to start off with primary markets. We have the SBI Cards Payment Services IPO which will list on the exchanges today. Do remember the offer was issued at 755 rupees per share and was oversubscribed 26 and a half times. Now moving on to Yes Bank, we have a lot of news flow here. Yes Bank has reported its largest ever quarterly loss of 18,564 crores compared to a profit of 1,000 crores in the same quarter last year. The increase in provisions needed to cover for loans depleted the bank's capital and the bank has reported a surge in bad loans which has led to a jump in provisioning that needs to be set aside against the Sava debt. In other Yes Bank related news, we have ICICI Bank, Access Bank, HDFC and Kotak Mahindra Bank which will invest sums of anywhere between 500 to 8000 crores each in the reconstruction of Yes Bank. India Bulls Group has given a clarification on the exchanges saying that the CBI raids which happened at Yes Bank's offices at India Bulls Finance Centre are not into the group. The CBI had also raided offices of Bliss Abode and Avant Realty in a fresh Yes Bank case. Moving on to RCF, we have ICRA which has downgraded Rashtriya Chemicals and Fertilizers banking facilities and NCDs worth 5,600 crores to AA minus from AA due to weakening cost competitiveness and tightening of energy norms by the government of India. And after announcing a temporary shutdown of its Kochi Park last week, Wandla Holidays will temporarily close its Bangalore Park from March 14 till 20th in accordance with the safety and precautionary guidelines by Karnataka government to contain the spread of coronavirus. Now these are just some of the stocks that we can watch out for as we move into trade today but don't forget to go through our morning edition of All You Need to Know only on BloombergQuint.com. Thanks Agam and as always thank you all for listening in. Do check out the website BloombergQuint.com over the course of the day for all the live market action and also all the latest in the world of business and practically everything else. Thanks so much for listening. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.